Everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. We got another GM today. Interesting symptoms starts and stalls within a few seconds. 2010 Chevy HHR with a 2.2 liter EcoTech. It sounds like a fuel starvation problem. But we're not going to put a, a fuel pump in just yet. <laughs> First thing, let's scan it for codes. And in the engine, we have eight codes stored, intake camshaft position performance, exhaust camshaft position performance, mass airflow sensor performance, mass airflow sensor circuit low frequency, map sensor performance, intake air sensor circuit high voltage, engine misfire detected and idle speed low. So those eight codes, here's what it does. Blah, blah, blah. Let's try again. Give it some gas here. I can keep it alive with the gas. Kind of. <laughs> nope. Okay, so where would you start? Um... Let's look at some live data. Let's see what the intake air temp reads. Let's see what the mass airflow reads. Could be a common problem here for all these sensors because they're all on the five volt tree for sure. So back out of here, go right into our ECM data stream. Key on, obviously. Let's do engine data. You have an air, barrel. Fuel pump relay. We're just interested in the key, like map, math. We'll put TPS in there. engine speed APP let's do that <clears throat> okay ambient air 89 degrees barometric pressure 14 psi interesting that it's psi start up see what happens Okay, you saw a mass airflow only reached 0 0.5 grams per second, right? Let's do a quick visual inspection on where this mass airflow lives. It has like a fuzzy intake pipe. Let's pop off this silly cover if possible <laughs> is it one of those that bolts on well there's our math right there and electronic throttle body so in order to get this thing off oh, oh it's the whole air box together in one but we can still back probe this thing see why the math reading is so low you can erase the codes and start it up one more time but and then the cam crank is the timing good I'm gonna do a clear flood just to see what how it cranks Okay, healthy crank. So timing wise, I think this engine's okay. And it starts up pretty good and then it just falls on its face. So one more time, look at this data here. Mm -hmm. 
0 0.49 that was the maximum reading on the mass airflow look at that so if that's the maximum reading it's not going to get enough fuel consistent TPS is fine let's look at our map it goes down to 5 psi so I believe the map so let's focus on this mass airflow sensor data and see what's going on. We, we could unplug it, see if it runs. So quick and dirty, unplug it test. Again, this isn't usually the place to start, but I just want to see what happens. Ready? It's running. We have no mass airflow data. Something sounds kind of rattly under there, but I think we're on the right track. Um, quicker than doing a fuel pressure check, and that would have said, hey, <laughs> you got your fuel pressure gauge out for no reason. So, so is it a bad mass airflow sensor? Or is there another problem? Because we got 0 0.5 grams per second, so it's reading something, but maybe not correctly we take it out maybe it's dirty also we should probably check the oil I don't like that rattling sound doing a quick oil pressure or uh, oil level check <clears throat> and quality we're on the very tip of the dipstick and it looks pretty dirty so oil change is definitely highly recommended <laughs> but that wouldn't keep it from running this mass airflow sensor looks like there's just two screws and the plug itself where did that go right here so it's a five wire probably a built-in intake air temp and let's uh, let's see what the wires are back probe it and see what see what it reads quickest way to look up some info and pinouts is the various component test meter so 2010 Chevy HHR we have our math operation and location info so five pin connector here we go math signal ground ignition positive voltage low reference and IAT sensor signal so let's go to our scope and here is our connector so let's back probe some of the pins so first one that's unplugged obviously we have five volts on the mass airflow signal wire so it's waiting to be pulled down and it's a frequency type sensor next is the ground again unloaded test but ground is there Ignition positive voltage, 12 volts. That's good. Next is low reference for the IET. And signal wire for the IET. And we know the IET works. I'm not worried about that. Again, it's a five volt pull down wire. So let's plug it in and put our pin on the yellow wire and see what this mass airflow sensor produces. Should be a frequency. Now on the scanner, it showed you know half a gram per second which is equivalent to 470 Hertz so let's plug this guy in I'm gonna back probe it just to not poke unnecessary holes in wires and if this doesn't work then there we go we have a frequency that looks good now to measure frequency correctly or you know right now it's just the raw signal we can always go to our 
graphing multimeter and here we can actually graph frequency and right now you see it's you know exactly what the scanner displays 470 hertz so let's start up the car rev it up and see if that changes at all the glare is going to be crazy here but we can we can try Maybe against the windshield. <laughs> okay, you can kind of see it. Let's start up. And key off. There, our frequency dropped. Key back on. We're back to 470. Hertz. Sorry, you guys can't see that, but that agrees with scan data that I've pulled up. That 470 Hertz does not change at all. It just stays there. Whenever the key is on, we get 470 Hertz. So mass airflow sensor is definitely not reporting anything useful. Is it a sensor fault? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> we can back probe the power and ground just to be a hundred percent sure that we have those. I'm certain that we will. So let's move to, again, let's set this just volts DC. So that's our frequency signal. Next wire is going to be ground. Zero point zero one volts. Check your leads. Make sure you have a good connection. There it is. Unplug it from there. We definitely were in the wire. And last one is the feed. Perfect. Fine. Let's get this mass airflow sensor out of here, do a visual inspection on it, and, well, if it's bad, we'll need to get a new one. Well, I got the map out. It actually looks kind of clean and fresh. And is that a GM part number? For some reason, I highly doubt it. So, I think this thing is just junk. Let's, um, I'm going to call the customer, I'm going to get a new one of these, dealerships right across the street, and plug it in and see if it works. Just a quick follow up on the Chevy HHR mass airflow diagnosis. The customer opted to get a sensor online, he said he's going to get an AC Delco. But yeah, you can get it for 50 bucks instead of, you know, 120 at the dealership. And understandably, he wanted to save some cash there. It was not an urgent problem. He just, you know, bought a car to fix it up and uh, probably flip it. So, at least the diagnosis was spot on. That brand new shiny mass airflow sensor, not OEM, put it right in the trash. Does not belong in that car. Um, other than that... You know, he'll do oil change, run it, clear the codes, and it should be okay. So, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.